All right, I won't be talking over this video much. Um, it's like 12.48, I got school in the morning. I just uh, got home from, uh, you know, hanging out with some family, we were breaking fast with them. Uh, and, you know, got late, you know, they live pretty a good distance away, so got here late. Um, but, you know, it's all cool. Um, so today's, or the, you know, this session, I used fat grips, I just put them on my rings. Um, I wouldn't say that fat grips should be used on rings to be honest because they're used for more of a straight bar But you know, I don't really have like a straight bar outside. So, you know, I just put them on my rings anyways they, They're gonna bend but it's like it's okay uh, So it's like the whole main thing was that I'm just kind of like really working on my grip um, These blue ones I've had these for a while actually and these blue ones they really really work your grip um, you're gonna feel heavier in your own hands if you use any type of like Bar or some type of accommodation to like make the grip much harder and of course you want to completely You know put your hand around you want to wrap your thumb around as well Which is gonna challenge like the entirety of your forearm and when you make your grip You know when you challenge your grip you're challenging you are your arms when you are challenging your arms You're challenging your back as well um, so those areas are going to grow bigger and stronger. Um, and I kind of enjoy, um, you know, fat grip training that way because of that challenge. Uh, and then I also did some neck training, uh, later in the video. Um, I don't really train my neck often. Um, I, when I did more of like lifting weights and whatnot, when I was like trying to get like as big as possible or whatever, I used, um, not used, but I just did some like neck curls and neck extensions, but in general, like outside of like looking jacked or whatever, it's supposed to be kind of like an insurance policy. Um, you know, it helps with headaches. It helps with concussions. It helps with even like getting your voice to be deeper, um, in some cases. So, um, it also kind of removes a lot more fat from your face since you have more muscle in the in your in your neck which is going to allow for the face to spread out a lot more evenly um but yeah i mean like you know training your neck is it should be more of like a thing to make sure you don't like snap in half when you get in some type of fatal accident or fatal encounter right oh they also even help with like getting knocked out right like punchers who are uh, not punchers but boxers or fighters who are able to take like just a bunch of like you know uh strikes to the face and they don't knock out that's because they have an incredibly strong you know well-developed neck um uh, but yeah that's i'd say that's all i have to say in regards to spending time with my family i had a good time um you know great it was great catching up with them uh and to break fast with them and whatnot um yeah but yeah i would say in general the fat grips i really liked them um, I haven't really trained with them in a while because I just haven't really tried to use them. Like I will use them sometimes. Like if anybody who uh, has watched the videos before this one, um, you might have seen like I'll have like the the black ones on like uh, my bar and the bar pull up bar in the garage. Um, I'll usually use those because the blue ones are very challenging. But it seems I've gained some strength, especially in my grip. Um, and I was able to do a really good amount of pull-ups with the blue uh, with the blue grips, um, without them like hindering basically me being able to um, challenge my back or challenge my uh, my shoulders and arms when I was doing like pull-ups and chin-ups. Um, I did chin-ups with them as well. I think when you're using fat grips um, for chin-ups, I think using it with the um, with rings are like actually the best because you get to move your wrist freely. Uh, if you're going to put the fat grips on a straight bar um, when you're doing chin-ups, it's going to kind of put a lot more strain on your wrist because your wrists kind of have to twist a lot more while also maintaining that, like, you know, that, you know, cuffed hand position. Um, so if you're going to probably put them on your, your, your chin-up, you know, to do chin-ups, probably either do rings, although, like, you know, again, I don't think the um the 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 fat grips are best for rings but or uh or you could put them on like um a type of bar where it's kind of like they have handles that come outwards diagonally for chin-ups 
which would probably be, be better um, since that has a lot less strain on your wrist. Here's me doing neck training. I It's very simple. I just, I only did neck curls um, and I just basically just took a five pound plate for my first set and just did like about 20. And then my uh, second set, I did uh, 10 pounds. So I took two five pound plates and then I think I did like 15 or 16. Um, so yeah, I haven't done neck training in a while, uh, but it's like, you know, it's just, you know, make sure you try and do it occasionally so you can just gain that strength and also that mobility in your neck as well. We spend a lot of times uh, looking down uh, at our phone, so it's best to kind of undo all that work by working out your neck. Um, and again, like just all the other benefits that come with working with your neck. Um, one thing I found surprising was that my grip wasn't cast. Uh, like, you know, I wasn't already like fatigued or tired out from my grip already. Um, from me doing, you know, just the pull-ups in general. Um, I think I even did some type of like fat grip stuff off camera yesterday. Um, and my, you know, again, my grip, my grip wasn't, wasn't out. So I, I, I kind of want to see how far I can take this, um, with fat grip training just to see like what's going to happen to like, of course my grip strength and like my forearms and whatnot. So, you know, and then, you know, you guys will be here for the ride seeing my documentation. Um, but honestly, yeah, I'm going to say, you know, that's about it. Uh, I do really have to get to bed. Um, you know, I hope you guys have, you know, are having a good day or good night, you know, whenever you're seeing this. Uh, I also hope you guys aren't watching my videos really late in the day. You should be getting, a, uh, getting sleep. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I know I didn't talk throughout the whole video, but it's on purpose. So yeah, see you guys in the next video. Peace out.
absolutely true, but all of this, you not wanting to join the established chains that are not willing to tolerate, you not being willing to actually establish strong boundaries, has nothing to do with you being nice, and everything to do with you being weak. It's because whenever you have the international relationship, you know for a fact that if you are from strict boundaries, you are going to have to fight for them, and fighting for them might be scary because it brings you to the conflict. This is the nature of the boundary. A boundary is a sign of mental fortitude. If you think this will not come to pass, and if someone says them, you stop them, you check them. And a boundary might be tested 200 or 1,000 times. It is only as strong as you are willing to make it, because a boundary in reality is nothing. It's just a word, it's like a promise. A promise is empty until fulfilled, just like a threat. Nothing is more pathetic than an empty threat. If you stand on them again, create an empty threat, people stop taking you seriously. The same with boundaries. If you stand on them again, your boundaries are just empty words. Soon enough, no one is going to respect anything that you say because you have demonstrated that you're not willing to stand up for what you say. And that's an image I proposed in this panel in the past. I'm going to do it here because I think it's quite valid and it's going to help you picture what a boundary should be. A boundary is like a castle fortification. By itself, it doesn't do much. Like, if you're not willing to stand the castle fortification and shoot people who want to breach it or camp over it, you might as well not have a wall because it's completely fucking useless. And I know that's great to say for us because I need people in my life to teach them too that boundaries are like magical spells. Like, you should be able to tell people, please don't do this, and they will be spelled down by that kindness, I guess. So what if they don't have that kindness? Again, this is you protecting the way you function. You most likely, when someone cuts the boundary, respect it outright because you are kind. But someone like me, I'm going to test your boundary. Just for the heck of seeing it, I do care.